Welcome to our webinar on functional safety for semiconductors in critical autonomous driving systems. This is a joint webinar with Optima Design Automation. My name is Eckhard Holz and I'm the manager of the safety expert team at ANSYS Metini. My co-presenter is Nael Kutzi, Director of Engineering at Optima Design Automation. Let me start with a quick introduction into Medini Analyze. Medini is ANSYS integrated solution for functional safety and reliability analysis and engineering according to standards such as ISO 26262 for automotive, IEC 61508 for industrial, or ARP 4761 for aviation system development. Medini supports efficient safety analysis methods from the system level all the way down to semiconductors and the silicon level. This is also reflected by the variety of customers, you may just see some logos here on our slide. Optima offers chip design as the fastest and most accurate fault analysis engine in the EDA market, benchmarked at over 1,000 times faster than the closest competitor. The Optima safety platform includes a solution for the static analysis of accurate fault sizing, a solution for permanent fault or hard error detection coverage measurement and improvements, and a solution for transient or soft error detection and design optimization. All these solutions are tailored to the needs of functional safety in general and ISO 26262 in specific. Optima also offers methodology services for semiconductor functional safety. The objectives of today's seminar are to demonstrate a combined next generation functional safety solution to address the most complex automotive challenges. We will show you how radically high-performance fault analysis can transform critical FUSA tasks, accelerate the schedule, and improve the coverage. The approach enables an efficient and consistent execution of all the quantitative safety analysis or hardware metrics required by ISO 26262 for semiconductors throughout all phases of the product development. The integration of Optima and ANSYS tools with the provided methodology creates a best-in-class solution in the market. Let's now go into the technical details. I will start with an overview of the flow of activities between our tools and how functional safety data is exchanged between the Optima safety platform and Medini Analyze. We will use this slide always when we change between the different tools. Everything starts as early as possible with a high level view of the semiconductor to be developed. The system architecture can be directly captured in Medini using its SysML capability and also be imported from other system design tools. Our demo example is the 10G Ethernet 2 CAN SOC. The main functional blocks as well as the data flow connections and control flow connection are captured in the architecture model. As functional safety is all about failures in the system and the potential hazards, that may be caused by them. Let us first determine the failure rate of our SOC. Medini supports this by a variety of failure rate handbooks and standards. We first select the appropriate category. Here in our case, we choose the IEC 62380 handbook. And then we set the appropriate parameters like dissipated power, number of transistors, or the pin number, which are very specific to our current design. And finally, we also associate emission profile to our system in order to specify the parameters of the intended application environment. In our example, we assume a specific usage profile as well as a specific temperature profile corresponding to systems deployed in the passenger compartment of a car. Based on this information, Medini can calculate the total failure rate for our complete system on a chip. Engineering knowledge can now be used to break down the total failure rate to the individual components by percentages. For example, the master gets 50% of its container 10E lock step. Moreover, we will focus here purely on the distribution of the die failure rate so we scale this value here in this case to the failure rate of the die. A lot of the information is at the moment just, of course, a rough estimation. For instance, the distribution of the failure rate, but they do already enable an initial calculation of the hardware metrics. Let me quickly show you now how this looks in Medini. The architecture editor has been used to create the system level model. 
The structure is reflected by nesting the different elements and of course the data flow is specified using interfaces or ports and connections between the different elements. A convenient table editor can be used to specify all the reliability related information in much more detail. Here we have the elements of our structure. We see the failure rate calculation, which has been associated with our top level here, the E10 GMAC. And we see for all the elements inside this uh, master, we have the percentage distribution. So the E10 lockstep gets 90%. The master gets again 50% of this lockstep unit and so on. Of course, these numbers are based just on rough engineering knowledge and will be refined later on. Similar also the distribution of the failures themselves, which we have associated with the different components are visible here and based on engineering knowledge. Nevertheless, these information do already help us to create an initial FMEDA worksheet, which is used to create all the metric results for the hardware. We just go to our chip in the model browser and choose here, derive an FMEA worksheet, which is in this case, a diagnostic coverage worksheet. Inside that worksheet, we see again, the structure of our system and the distribution of the failure rate according to appropriate die area estimations. We see the failures and now we see for each of those failures, of course, what is the related failure rate, which may be taken into account for first metrics calculations. What we have to do as a safety engineer here is to estimate whether this failure mode will really violate the safety goal. And if we have detected that it violates the safety goal, we will associate an appropriate safety mechanism here, for instance, lockstep detection to it. The coverage values here, again, are initial estimations. And we can here, of course, as I attach further elements to our failures if we have found out they are safety relevant. The result of the metric is directly calculated when we execute the FMEDA in the table. And we see here, we have achieved already a result of 98.6% of failure coverage for single point failures, which is not yet near our target here, which is 99%, but it gives us a good indication whether we go into the right direction. Of course, we want to do the calculation with much more precise numbers. So let me hand over now to Nael from Optima for the next step. Thank you, Eckhart. Going back to our joint flu. At this point, the safety setup from Medini is passed to Optima Safety Platform and ready for analysis using Optima SA, providing accurate metrics of the various fault types within the design. First, allow me to briefly review the various solutions that Optima Safety Platform provides based on its high-performance fault injection engine. Optima SA is the static analysis tool that quickly provides an overview of the fault types in the design. For low-risk ACL A and ACL B designs, this might be well sufficient to satisfy the ISO 26262 metrics. For higher-risk requirement devices, it provides an effective and accurate front end for more advanced fault analysis, as we will see here. Optima HE is the hard error solution that makes use of Optima's high-performance fault analysis to rapidly analyze the fault coverage of designs and include capabilities to automatically improve the coverage. Last, an Optima SE performs fault grading on soft errors that is transient faults. Moving on, Optima SE, which I'll be demonstrating to you in a second, provides an early fast metric prediction that includes a complete report on the fault types in the design. It optimizes the entire functional safety process by extracting and controlling the fault list from the design. And for low risk ACLA or ACLB designs, it can generate all required metrics for the ISO 26262 process without the requirement to run fault analysis at all. The user interface provides a clear graphics, which shows exactly the partitioning of the potential faults, which I'll describe on the next slide. Before we demonstrate this process, I would like to quickly review the fault types that require analysis as described by the ISO 26262 standard. This is easily done as follows. Imagine a design such as the one in the top left corner where we have a master circuit that requires analysis and the shadow identical circuit providing a safety mechanism which could detect faults on the master output. 
Now the two circuits are stimulated using the same input and the outputs are being compared. If no faults occurred in the master design, then the two outputs would be identical. However, if a fault occurred in some section of the master design and the stimulus provided enough coverage to stimulate that section, then the two outputs would be different for the particular fault, triggering the safety mechanism. The output of the master block, which is used in the actual design, can be referred to as the failure strobes, and that a failure in one of the output strobes of this block will be critical to the design, based on a fault occurring in the cone of influence, or simply COI, of the master output. The output of the comparator is referred to as the detection strobe, and that the miscompare here will indicate that the fault is detected in the COI of both blocks, so is considered visible. The triangle diagram shows all the possible fault types in this arrangement, so it is worth describing the nomenclature used here. Let us start. A safe fault is a fault that will not cause disruption in the operation of the design. A visible fault is a fault that causes the triggering of a detection strobe, thereby being visible to the system. And a detected fault is a fault that is detected and repaired by the safety mechanism. There will be some set of possible faults outside both coils, the green area, that can be considered safe and that they do not affect the master output. In addition, the proportion of faults that are indicated on a detection strobe but do not appear on the failure strobe and therefore will not have an eventual effect on the design may be also considered safe. Some of these may be detected by the safety mechanism, by the way. Similarly, some faults that have an effect on the failure strobe but are invisible to the detection strobe due to a number of possible reasons will be considered unsafe. This dangerous set of faults, as shown in part of the red triangle, are known as single point faults and have the potential to create problems. A separate set of triangles indicate faults that appear on the failure strobe and are detected on the detection strobe, so overlap both triangles, simply the orange area. All these faults can be considered unsafe and that they appear on the failure strobe even though they are visible on the detection strobe. Let us look uh, closely on these. Some of them will be detected and fixed by the safety mechanism. Those are the detected multi-point faults. Others are classed as residual faults, which are faults that are in the area of buffered uh, area, uh, buffered from safety critical functionality, but that the safety mechanism cannot fix them. These are allowed to a certain extent. As for one of these faults to break something, another fault would be required. <clears throat> Lastly, there are some leftover faults. Those are latent and perceived multipoint faults, which may be disregarded. Confused? You're not alone. It's not a com it's, but it's not complicated as it seems, I promise. For the purpose of this introductory seminar, the faults are accompanying metrics to watch for are as follows. The single point, a fault metric, SPFM, which clearly must be minimized. Then we have the latent fault metric, LFM, which also needs to be kept below a certain level. And then we have the probabilistic metric for random hardware failure, or PMHF, which is a general metric based on both failure and time rate, fit rate, and diagnostic coverage, DC. In these cases, the metrics that require the use of fault analysis to uncover a specific level depending on the ASIM rating required for the device. Moving on. Okay, given these definitions, let us have a closer look at the static analysis tool that provides a reading on all these fault types. Okay. In this view, we have the Optima Safety Platform, a open, and they already preloaded with the following script for a, a saving some time. The particular script is a fairly simple. It is split a, a, a between a design setup part, where we a, analyze and they elaborate our top, and the safety setup part, where we define the critical nodes, a, a, which are the failure strobes, and the detection groups, which are a, the detection strobes. Uh, respectively. Now, all what needs to be done is running the uh, Optima SA engine 
This can be done uh, by invoking the prepare uh, design command. And as we can see here, the tool had the, uh, already started the uh, working and apparently it is done. <clears throat> so uh, what do we see here? Uh, as a result of the uh, Optima SA analysis, uh, we see that uh, we have some new information here. First, we have the uh, uh, hierarchy dashboard where uh, uh, our design hierarchy is being listed. And we see here some dials or knobs uh, more on this shortly. We also see the famous uh, safety visualizer dashboard or the triangles uh, area where uh, for each uh, selected instance, uh, we have the respective uh, uh, fault classification uh, uh, metrics uh, for this uh, specific uh, instance. Along with it, we have a, a summary table where we have a, 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 some essential information such as a gates counts, a flops counts, latches, area, and the, again, these numbers are being a, a, a split or classified based on the respective a, a, a fault classification. Okay, here regarding these dials, these dials are a, a, the same a, numbers that we see here, but they are specific for the given instance. So like if, if we continue browsing the hierarchy for each instance and its sub instances, we see the respective, we see the respective metrics. Okay. So our analysis is done. We can also see for each node within the selected the hierarchy, we can see it's a, a structural a category, whether it belongs to the UV area, to the SI area, SV area, or UI. A area, okay. A one note, one note here is that our a UI number is very low, and this could be attributed uh, to the fact that for uh, demo purposes, the current design that uh, we use uh, had the uh, undergone different cycles of uh, uh, development, and it is in 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 a mature state where the number of uh, UI faults had been reduced to the minimum, okay? One thing I would like to show also is that, uh, for instance, I have this node, <coughs> okay? And I see that its structural category is UV. I can also show the source open by opening source navigator for this uh, uh, same node. And the, uh, the, our source navigation our source navigator will uh, will automatically highlight the uh, relevant nodes or re relevant areas within the code with the appropriate fault classification that the, the engine, the SA engine, uh, had uh, calculated. So with our analysis uh, done, it is now uh, uh, to prepare the data for Medini Analyze. This could be uh, done easily using the data exchange wizard. Uh, with this wizard, you have two options, either the Optima Safety Report, which is this uh, table exported as a CSV format, or the ANSYS Medini Analyze files. And since uh, we are demonstrating a, a Medini Optima Safety a platform, we will go with the Medini part. And uh, here we choose the first option, which is the design information. And the, I simply need to uh, specify a path where to put this data, design info, and finish. And as a result, the respective TKL command had been uh, generated, and the XML file with the ANSYS Medini uh, required information is ready. Thank you, Nayel. Having the details of the IP design available, we can now move over again to our Medini tool. Especially we have now the gate area and transistor area for all the different parts in our hardware available. And the idea is to break down the total failure rate of our system on a chip now to the individual components and subparts in proportion to the appropriate numbers of the IP design. What we do for this purpose is we allocate all the components at the top level architecture to entries and instances on our lower level and we calculate the appropriate failure rates for the individual components using the 
share of the die in relation of the total share, which is used by the complete system. First, we start with the import of the IP design information using the IPD XML format. This is an open standard format which can be used for importing data from a variety of semiconductor design tools. Some adjustments and automatic transformations may be required depending on the structure of the IP design. As we do want to do also some fault injection simulation later, we prepare for this already now by importing ports of the individual instances. The next step is to associate the components of the SOC architecture with the individual instances or instance hierarchies of the IP design. An easy to use side-by-side -side view let us do this individually for each component of the architecture. We are done with this when all the components have their IP design instances allocated. Based on these allocations, we can now update the distribution of the total failure rate based on the die area allocated to the individual components. The aggregation summary helps us also identifying missing allocations. For instance, in our example, the CPU is currently not yet having any die area associated, and it would also point us to potential double allocations, which may be done in error by the safety engineer. An associated and derived FMEDA table gets automatically be updated with these data to show not only the die area percentages, but also the resulting failure rates of the individual components. Consequently, the single point and latent fault metrics calculations are now reflecting the real system much better. Nevertheless, of course, we still may have some data which are based on engineering estimations. This is, for instance, the failure rate distribution to the individual failure modes, but also, of course, the coverage of failures by different safety mechanisms, which we start to use here with default values. In order to get more precise data for those failure modes and safety mechanisms, which significantly contribute to the metric results, we can now prepare a configuration for a targeted fault injection campaign and hand over these configuration data to the Optima HE tool to perform a fault analysis on potential hard errors. What you see is here that we identify these points at the high level here, map them down to the individual instances in the IP design, and then hand that over to the tools from Optima. In order to do so, we identify in Medini the relevant ports at the IP design level and associate them to observation points to the relevant failure modes and as diagnostic points to the safety mechanisms. Both can easily be done in Medini, and you see here the observation points related to these failure stuck at data, and we also see the diagnostic points associated with our safety mechanism lockstep error. After this step is finished, Medini enriches the original IPD XML file with the fault injection data and hands it over to Optima. So now it's time again for Niall to go into the details of the fault injection process. Thank you, Edgar. So back to our flow. We see it is time now to run dynamic fault analysis and establish the required metrics for our device. Okay. So this is performed using our Optima HE tool or engine for hard error analysis, also known as stack-up fault analysis. The solution takes information either from Medini or Optima SA on the fault list that requires analysis, as well as the design itself, either RTL or gate level, and performs full fault analysis on the design. Traditional analysis is notoriously slow. At the heart of the Optima solution is an ultra-high performance fault injection engine, or FIE, that saves a huge amount of time for this type of analysis. Also included in the solution is our coverage maximizer technology that automatically helps improve diagnostic coverage, which is a critical time sink, by the way. These technologies allow particular fault metric analysis for the first time, eliminating some of the ad hoc methods used today, for example, statistical analysis to predict metrics. 
The underlying technology is a very different fault analysis a, 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 a process that replaces traditional slow fault simulation. By using a range of new algorithms and other techniques, this technology has been proven on real designs to provide a performance advantage up to 1000x over the fastest traditional fault simulation. It works across both RTL and gate level and, repl and replaces a traditional fault simulation, leading to a greatly accelerated schedules and improved tool functionality. This slide, for instance, shows a benchmark where a F FIE, the optimized the fault injection engine, is being demonstrated and a, with a great acceleration than 1000 leaks. This was on a real large commercial processor design. Of course, all benchmarks they vary, depend on various factors, but this technology is now well proven to provide dramatic acceleration. Coupled with a, a FIE is our coverage maximizer technology. Once simulation has been done, often there are coverage issues and finding the reason for these can be a very complex and a onerous task. The coverage maximizer automatically looks for coverage goals and allows the injuries to reach a high level of diagnostic coverage very quickly. Okay, I think that uh, it is now a uh, time to see this technology in action. Let us move to the demo. Okay, so now it's time to see the uh, Optima HE engine in action. Okay, uh, I have the Optima safety platform open and ready. Uh, Optima safety platform had the uh, platform had been uh, also preloaded in this case with uh, a similar uh, uh, tickle script. Uh, aside, uh, aside from the following command, here we are introducing the uh, safety manager uh, uh, command, which is the component responsible of uh, data exchange between Ansys Medini and the Optima safety platform. And we are providing the safety manager with a setup file, an XML file exported from Ansys Medini. Okay, uh, here we can see the uh, uh, content of this uh, uh, XML file, we can see part of it, and the, uh, this XML file basically defines execution uh, campaigns and the uh, ex execution set campaigns and campaigns, which are simply jobs to be run using Optima HE. Uh, for the sake of this demo, our execution set is based on the uh, RxEQ0 and the RxDQ0 from the master uh, uh, part. Okay, these are the instances that the HE engine will be instructed to work on. HE could be uh, invoked uh, in two different ways. First, uh, the first option is to use the command run HE, and the second the option is the, and this is the more relevant option in this case in our demo, uh, which is uh, to rely on information provided uh, uh, by Ansys Medini. In this case, we use the safety manager run campaign command. And this command will uh, automatically uh, prepare a uh, HE and the job to be, to be run and start the system. As we can see here, the data is being uh, updated uh, online as the engine progresses. These are the, the, the uh, uh, respective instances that the, our engine is working on. So we are talking about the uh, uh, four uh, 4,500, uh, almost 4,500 uh, uh, faults, uh, which uh, would take between uh, three to three and a half uh, minutes based on uh, the current system load. Okay, so the HE engine run had been uh, uh, completed and the safety campaign uh, data is ready to be exported to uh, ANSYS Medini. Again, we use the uh, data exchange wizard Ansys Medini analyze files. And now we choose the campaign information and simplify the path for this. And hit finish. 
Okay, again, the respective command they had been uh, invoked on the file. It had been uh, successfully exported and ready to be uh, imported within Access Medina uh, again. Okay, now that we have seen HE or Optima HE in action, and before leaving uh, the Optima solution, it's worth also uh, noting that soft errors or transient faults are also uh, uh, supported by the Optima Safety uh, platform, as the, uh, uh, some analysis is also required. Our solution which is Optima SE, performs these tasks also using a, a, our Optima FIE, the fault, inje the fault injection a, 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 a engine, to accurately and quickly establish the sensitivity of the design to these fault types. It also provides a directed hardening process, which allows the worst transient fault effects to be eliminated without switching a large number of, flop, of uh, flops or flip-flops for power-hungry equivalents. Using traditional fault simulation, software analysis requires months to complete, leading the designers to instead replace all their flip-flops with hardened equivalents, unnecessarily, and increasing power consumption by more than 30%. For the first time, it is now possible to perform this task quickly and only switch out critical flip-flops. Unfortunately, we do not have the time today to go into this technology, but please feel free to visit our website or ask us if you are interested in learning more about the solution. Having established the ISO 26262 metrics, it is now time to pass this information back to Medini to revalidate the design. Eckhart will ramp up the webinar by describing this process. Thank you. Thank you, Nail. Now we are going into the final steps of our functional safety flow between the ANSYS and the Optima tools for the safety analysis of semiconductor system on a chip. We are going into a revalidation of the single point and latent fault metrics based now on the results of the fault injection executed using the Optima tools. Everything starts again with the import of the IP design data into Medini. These are the data which have been produced by the Optima tools. As Medini has recorded in the previous steps, the mapping from the system architecture to the instances of the IP design, as well as the information on which model elements had been selected for the fault injection simulation, the changes will be directly reflected also in the FMEDA table. In our example, we have focused on the diagnostic coverage values for the single point safety mechanism. The table displays the differences between the original estimated values and the values which have been derived from the fault injection simulation. The metrics result is also updated to the new values. As we see also here in the table, our original estimation of the safety uh, mechanisms and their diagnostic coverage was higher than what we could prove with our fault injection campaign. So we lowered here, for instance, the coverage for lockstep detection for the stuck at data failure from originally estimated 99% just down to 96.78%. This will be also reflected in the appropriate metrics result here. Now our metrics is just 88%, so we still have to do some work on our design and our safety mechanisms in order to fulfill all the targets which are given by the ISO 26262 standard. Let me go back once more into Medini Analyze and show you how all these information are captured here. We see our initial architecture model as we have seen already in the first part of the tool demonstration. We also see now here in the table editor the updated percentages based on the information we received in the early steps from the Optima tool. So the distribution has now changed to much more precise numbers, really reflecting the number of transistors, respectively the die area, which is associated with the individual components. We have imported our IP design model into Medini, and I just show you here the top level of the hierarchy. So this is a large model here, just directly created based on the information which have been contained in the imported IPD XML file. We have done the allocation between the elements of the high-level model. Here we see it on the left side. And the elements of the IP design model, which are shown here on the right side. And I can show once more here which allocation have been done. So I can reveal here, for instance, the slave 
element here at the system level model has been allocated to the following elements here at the IP design. And this may be, of course, a deep nesting hierarchy here. So we see allocation, of course, has not to be done all the way down to the individual levels, but can be done here at this level to the appropriate elements here. We have derived the FMEDA worksheet initially from our architecture model, so from this one here, and had filled in already the appropriate safety mechanisms as well as the appropriate coverage values. After updating all the information now with the data from the fault injection, we have here our updated FMEDA worksheet. We see the die area information has been used to calculate the failure rate of the components, break that down to the individual failure modes, and we have the safety mechanism attached to that. Here in the side-by-side -side view, you see once more the estimated diagnostic coverage from our first FMEDA execution. And now we see here the numbers which came in directly from the fault injection, which tells us what is the real coverage which has been detected during that fault injection simulation, and it has been changed to this one. And unfortunately, also our permanent fault metric has now gone down as it already had been explained inside the slides. The information related to that one, we can also look up. We see once more here for the stuck at data, we have all the observation points associated. And I can, of course, here add more observation points to it. And in the same way, we have here for our safety mechanism, the appropriate diagnostic points associated. And again, I can just show here where are these diagnostic points. So they will be directly detected inside my IP design model. With these slides, I will close our presentation and give you a short summary of what we have achieved with the joint approach by ANSYS and Optima. The combined function safety flow streamlines the entire FMEDA process and increases reliability and predictability. We could show a significant reduction of the schedule through the accelerated core fault analysis technology and also through the guided fault injection simulation by the combination of Medini and Optima. A consistency between the IP design and the safety analysis is ensured throughout all the different stages of this functional safety analysis flow. And finally, the system level metrics, excluding any IP data, can now be derived and handed over to integrators for application-specific configuration that would include selection of safety mechanisms, modification of mission profiles, and any other additional configuration which may be required by a system configurator. Nael and I want to thank you for your attention to listen to today's seminar. If you have any question, please feel free to raise those questions here in our webinar, or in addition, also, of course, feel free to contact us, contact us directly.